The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our discussion on vendor deposits in Design Manager. My name is Brad, and I'll be hosting the demonstration today. If you have questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them on, your, on the questions pane on your GoToWebinar panel. If the question is outside of the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. And lastly, if you missed a portion of the webinar or want to review any of our past discussions, go to our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc. Design Manager INC. And here you can see a complete listing of all sorts of topics, including quick start videos, short yet yeah, comprehensive tutorials, and then much more in depth discussions or webinars, such as the one we'll be having today. Okay, today we'll be discussing one of the three major transactions for your vendors, vendor deposits, which are the initial funds required by the vendor to begin processing the order. The other main types of transactions for your vendors are vendor invoices, which are the final bills for completed goods and services, and operating expenses, which are used to record general company expenditures, such as rent or mortgage payments, phone and internet, etc. Both vendor invoices and operating expenses have been included in their own webinars in great detail, and will be re uh, repeated again in the future, of course, as well. But you can see them on our uh, YouTube channel. For vendor invoices, look for Accounting Course 5. And for operating expenses and reimbursable expenses, look for Accounting Course 7. And you can review either of those at your leisure. Okay, let's get started. Deposits are the funds necessary to send to the vendor, so they will begin processing an order, essentially a display of good faith on both parties. In general, all such funds should be entered using the vendor deposit function in Design Manager with one caveat. If the vendor requires 100% of the order prior to processing, sometimes referred to as a pro forma invoice or payment, in those cases, you want the transaction to be entered as a vendor invoice for the reason which we'll discuss later in today's webinar. Vendor deposits are related to one of the specialized accounts in Design Manager, and that's actually defined in your company information window. So let's go to File, Company Information and Settings, and we can see we have our sales and cost of goods sold accounts, and we have our other accounts. And if we look under our payable accounts, the very first one listed is your vendor deposit account, which you can configure yourself. Further, let's take a jump over to our accounting tab and go to our chart of accounts. Notice that the vendor deposit is an asset account. Well, it's an asset account as the funds truly belong to your company. The vendor is simply holding those funds to apply to the actual purchase of the goods and services at a later point. It's only when the deposit is applied to that inevitable final invoice that the deposit gets relieved as your company takes physical and fiscal ownership of the merchandise or service. In the same vein, we frequently get questions as to why the deposit is not increasing the actual cost of the component or the company cost of goods sold in general. Well, there isn't really any cost at this point. Think of a window treatment as an easy example. We're providing the workroom with a deposit for work that clearly hasn't been produced yet and certainly hasn't been provided to our company. Essentially, we're saying, Hold my funds while you get the, the job done. Then apply them to the balance at the end. Now, we can configure vendors who uh, require deposits frequently. And to do so, we go under Project tab. Let's go to our Vendor Glossary. And let's use Century Furniture as an example. If we edit the vendor on the Vendor Payee window, We'll jump over to the Defaults tab, and notice we have an area that we can put in a default vendor deposit percentage. Further, you can select what types of goods or services, or in our terminology, what component types to which the deposit should be applied. For example, in our case, we're only the, the Century Furniture vendor only wants a deposit on merchandise, but not freight or any of the other component types. Now, it is important to remember, this default deposit percentage and uh, the deposit applies to, of course, only is applicable for project purchase orders. That does not work the same way for inventory purchase orders, as we'll see later in our discussion. 
Let's go ahead and see that in action. We'll jump over to our project specifications. Let's go to our Hilson project. And let's add some bar stools as an example. Bar stools, we'll put those in the wine cellar. Let's get four of them. Let's classify those as furniture. And we'll jump to our component window. And notice when we select Century, just like that, our vendor deposit defaults for us. Really making our data entry as accurate and as fast as possible. Of course, I could change that if necessary, but it's nice that it gets done so for me. Go ahead and put in a cost, how about 400? And let's even add some freight. And let's say that's 200 for everything. And if we click OK, let's see one thing else. Now, we do have our vendor deposit on the merchandise, but notice that it's not being recorded on the freight. Well, we just saw how the Century Furniture Vendor is configured only to have that 50% deposit applicable to merchandise and not freight. Now, if I wanted to change that, I could certainly do so here as well. Okay. Now, all deposits need to be recorded against a purchase order. So the next step would be to create a purchase order for the bar stools. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail on the purchase order process, as that is covered at length in our Project Management Course 2, Purchase and Work Orders. Again, on our YouTube channel, Project Management Course 2, Purchase Orders and Work Orders. So we'll hop off our specifications, jump down to our Project Purchase Order window, go to our Hilson project. Let's go ahead and create a new one by using the Add PO button. There's our bar stools. And if I select the bar stools, notice that my freight is tagged conveniently for me automatically. And for those of you who don't know, you can uh, very easily make any changes to the component here if necessary. So if I didn't see my deposit calculating as desired, I can just double click on the component and make any changes to the vendor deposit percentage or anything on the component window for that matter. If we click OK, We can now begin to process the purchase order on our generated purchase orders window. And if we go to our print preview of the PO document, we can see our bar stools, there's our unit and extended costs. Our deposit close is conveniently listed in bold for us in the bottom left corner. And you can see that it is really only 50% of the merchandise cost and is not including that extra $200 of freight. We can close our preview window and accept our purchase order, and there we go. Great, so we quickly made a purchase order <clears throat> indicating that we're going to be providing a deposit, but we still actually need to record that deposit itself. So let's do so. Conveniently, all the various transactions necessary to record payments from your vendors, again, vendor deposits, vendor invoices, uh, operating expenses, are all done through the same window and it's accessed on the accounting tab under your accounts payable frame, bills and invoices. And that gets us to our vendor deposits, invoices and operating expenses window. Now we don't have many op options here, so we're gonna go ahead and click add to input our vendor deposit. The very first thing we do is simply select the type of entry we're recording. And in our case, it's going to be a deposit for a project purchase order. And by selecting that type, you can see that the window itself reconfigures as necessary. And if we jump over to the purchase order field, we can start typing in, grab our brand new purchase order. And just by doing so, most of the information is conveniently recorded for us. We can see Century is the vendor, which is defaulted. The invoice or deposit date defaults to today's date, but that can be changed, of course, as is the due date. The amount is automatically calculated for us based upon uh, the amount calculated on the purchase order itself. Again, that could be changed if necessary. Transaction description are entirely optional, but I highly recommended uh, so I can see what I was doing when entering in information weeks or even months prior. And it can be very simple, of course, something along the lines of deposit on bar stools. We even have our area for notes. So, uh, this could be used for 
communication in larger companies if, if so desired. I could pop in today's date and say something along the lines of, hey, Allison, can you pay the check if possible? And I can initial as such. Speaking of payment, we have our pay with option in the lower left corner. There's always going to be a default for a check, but also any credit card accounts that I have configured in Design Manager will be listed here for me, such as our American Express account as an example. Now, I always do like to point out, if I do opt to uh, indicate payment by American Express, I'm not truly charging my American Express card. I'm only indicating to Design Manager that I did pay via my Amex or will do so in the future. And if I leave it set for check, we still have our hand check wire transfer button uh, active or enabled. Here, I can indicate uh, if I actually wrote a, on my check ledger itself to provide to the vendor, I can input the check number and date that I did so. Or if I paid via any electronic method, I could select my wire transfer, indicate the date that I uh, use my online bill pay or what have you, and the appropriate checking account to uh, indicate that as well but we'll leave it set for a check. And notice if I did select American Express, of course, my hand check wire transfer button would be uh, disabled as one would imagine. If I had a whole stack of deposits or bills to enter, I could use my OK Add button, which not only saves my entry, but it gets ready for me to add other entries quite quickly by keeping our render deposit window up for me. And you can see there is our entry listed on the new tab of our vendor deposits, invoices, and operating expenses window. It's important to remember, this deposit is not yet recorded into our accounting records. We still need to post or process the transaction, which we'll do so shortly. Now, Professional Cloud is designed for the large design firms who handle voluminous amounts of accounting transactions and allows you to enter them in a batch mode. And there's lots of other features just from this uh, new entry window as well. Conveniently, the total purchases accumulates in the top uh, right corner for you. We can edit or make any changes to our entries prior to posting them. I could delete it if I'm entered it uh, in error or duplicate, etc. I have the ability to print a posting journal using the journal button in the bottom right corner. Notice that the journal is automatically set to send the document to my print device itself. So if I wanted to use the print preview button, I would have to always uncheck the direct to printer button so I could preview it. The show item detail uh, option is not applicable for deposits, but if I had vendor invoice, I was recording those types of things, it would show me the actual items on the deposit, uh, pardon me, the vendor invoice itself. And I have the option to show the notes that I've created. And there's our purchases journal listing. And it shows all the types of transactions that we're entering. There's the notes being listed for us, the amounts, et cetera, what accounts are being affected, and even an account summary as well. Now, if I actually truly do want to process or record the vendor deposit, I simply click the post button in the far right, and indeed say yes, that I'm going to post these into the designated fiscal month. It is the fiscal month that determines the period into which the deposit was recorded on your financials. That's different than deposit date or invoice date, uh, which is really the calendar date of the transaction itself. Very frequently, the calendar date and fiscal month will be aligned, but certain companies have what is known as a fiscal offset or their fiscal year does not close on a calendar basis. Now, once I've posted that, if we look over on our payments and checks window, we can see there is our Century Furniture deposit for our particular purchase order. And I could go ahead and truly process a check if desired. Now that's an entire uh, set of its own discussion, which I go into great detail under another one of our webinars, in this case, Accounting Course 6, paying bills. Also on our vendor deposit invoices and operating expenses window, well, 
My transaction is no longer listed on my new tab, so where is it? Well, it's on the existing tab. And there it is, right at the top. And from here, I could also make any edits. Now, this uh, only is uh, available if the uh, entry was not yet had a check generated for it. We wouldn't allow you to uh, change the amounts or anything on a, a deposit while a check is already posted against it. I could even void or remove it if desired. And I can even use the check vendor invoice detail window to see what accounts are affected. And I can even easily access the notes as well. Great, vendor deposit, very simple transaction to enter, record, and review. Now next, I wanna show how to enter a vendor deposit against an inventory purchase order for our professional users out there who maintain and uh, replenish inventory in a uh, timely manner. Let's imagine that we need to uh, reorder some merchandise for our inventory. And you're gonna see the process as a whole is nearly identical to the one which we just reviewed for project-related merchandise. So now let's jump over to our inventory tab. Let's go to our inventory stock item glossary. And if we just grab one of our, uh, our items here, such as this uh, French sconce, on my inventory stock item window, I can see my uh, stock number, description, uh, cost and pricing information. But what I don't see here is an area to input the vendor deposit percentage. Well, in the case of inventory, this is actually done on the, uh, in the uh, process of creating the inventory purchase order itself. So let's take a look at that. So let's say we're going to order some more of our, um, our sconces. We're gonna make a purchase order for it. And we're also going to record the inventory deposit on it as well. So in that case, we'll go to our inventory POs under our documents frame on our inventory tab, and we'll add a new one. We click the add button to select what items we're making our inventory purchase order for. Grab our sconce. Let's say we need two of them. And from here, notice there is my requested deposit percentage. And even if I selected Century, as the vendor, the deposit does not default. That all does have to get input uh, manually on inventory purchase orders. But if I input a deposit, notice upon doing so, the amount calculates for me automatically. Click OK and OK again, and we can process our inventory purchase order. And there it is. And we can see our deposit enclosed in the bottom left corner again in bold, just like we saw on our project purchase orders. Close and accept. And now we have the purchase order to which we can actually create the vendor deposit, just like we did on the project side. So let's go back to our accounting. Again, all transactions to the vendor that we're inputting go through the bills and invoices window. We're gonna add, but in this case, we're going to do a deposit on an inventory purchase order. Put in our inventory PO number. Again, immediately our vendor for century defaults today's date as the deposit date, which is just fine. Transaction description, deposit on sconces. The amount recalculates for us. And let's imagine that we're going to put that on our American Express. Click OK and post. And there it is on our existing tab. The process is the exact same for all intents and purposes as recording deposits on project purchase orders. Very, very, very easy. Now, as many of you know, a successful design firm can do a lot of purchasing. So such purchasing can result in a great number of vendor deposits. So to facilitate this process of, of inputting or creating those vendor deposits, we've designed the quick add vendor deposit window. And that's accessed from our vendor deposit invoices and operating expenses window using the deposits button in the bottom left. And there it is. And this is a very sort of lesser known feature in Design Manager that really allows you to input deposit transactions extremely rapidly. What we're gonna see here on our purchase order list is all purchase orders 
that require a vendor deposit but do not have yet one recorded. And it's gonna do so for both inventory and project purchase orders. So it'll handle both of them for you. You can show all projects in inventory or you could show or focus just on deposits required for a particular project. Put in the Hilsons and we'll only be looking at our Hilson purchase orders. We can input our payment method, check American Express, of course, the date for both the deposit date and due dates. We can also reprint a purchase order right from our quick add vendor deposits. Very convenient if we want to have a uh, physical or uh, printed document for us. I can select as many uh, purchase orders to which I want to create the deposits, but I can also use the tag feature. So I could select them all. As you can see, they automatically tagged for us. I could remove the selection of tag for all of them. And perhaps most conveniently, I can even do so for a particular vendor. So now let's say we want to create uh, deposits for our legacy antiques vendor. I can just select or tag them manually and click the OK button. And what Design Manager will do is it automatically creates those deposit transactions for me and puts them right on my new tab. And from here, I could make small changes if necessary. Let's say that I wanted to change the date on one of the particular deposits or input some notes or a transaction description. I could do all of that uh, on a per a transaction uh, a basis. But if I have 10, 20, 30, 40 deposits, I can just select them and boom, I have them all listed here for me. Even if I'm going to enter a single vendor deposit, some people just feel it's easier to hit the deposit button, select the one in question, and you're good to go. Let's get rid of that one. So a very handy and a lesser known feature for our uh, Design Manager Pro Cloud users that really allows you to handle those deposit transactions quickly. And just like that, we can post them out. And there they are, very, very convenient. Okay, now let's take a few minutes to consider the accounting behind recording a vendor deposit. Let's go back and review the deposit we entered in the beginning of our discussion for our purchase order that we created for our bar stools. And there it is. Recall that we have our detail button in our bottom left corner, which shows us in our top grid the accounts that are affected. We can see that we credit or increase our accounts payable liability account, means that we owe money. And we also simultaneously debit or increase our vendor deposit account as well. Now, if we process the check for our purchase, our deposit, as we saw back on our payments and invoices grid, let's go ahead and make that check. There's my middle check form for Century Furniture. Let's process that. Drops off my payments and checks. Now what happens? Well, let's take a look at our transaction search window to get some more information about what's going on with our purchase order. Let's pop the Hilsons in here and we'll go to purchase order five. Click our find button and we can see any transaction that we've yet recorded for this particular purchase order by putting in our project and purchase order number. The bottom we see our vendor deposit. And just like we saw in our detail uh, vendor invoice check window, we're increasing our vendor deposit account and we're increasing our accounts payable account. Here is us processing the check. So what happens here? Well, now we're debiting or reducing or alleviating our accounts payable liability and we're crediting or reducing our checking account as one would imagine. What we don't see, however, is any change in the vendor deposit account itself. Well, only when we enter the vendor invoice or the final bill that uses the deposit does that vendor deposit get reduced. What do I mean by that? Well, 
let's drop our transaction search down and jump back onto our vendor deposit invoices window. And let's go ahead and just as an example, input a vendor invoice for our project purchase order. So now you can see the window is a bit different. Again, I go into great detail into the vendor invoicing process in our Accounting Course 5 Vendor Invoices webinar. But let's pop our invoice number in and an invoice date. Pursuant to this discussion, notice that our less deposit amount is already calculated there for me. I could change that. Let's say that there was a partial a vendor invoice or perhaps only two of the stools came in and they, they invoiced us for those. And when I do so, you can see the amount due uh, correspondingly updates. What I can't do is input a value more than my deposit. Design Manager will automatically indicate to me, hey, you have uh, $800 of total deposit so far. Uh, this is the amount that you can use and no more. Now here, if we click OK, and we post our vendor invoice, let's jump back on our transaction search, refresh it by clicking our find again, and we have some more transactions. There is our original deposit, there is our check on our deposit, but now we can see a project of purchase order related vendor invoice. Here, we are increasing or accrediting our accounts payable because now we have a thousand dollars that we owe century we haven't written that check yet the entire 1800 1600 of merchandise and 200 dollars of freight is in our work in process account it's going to remain there until we actually invoice the client a work in process is an extremely important concept again uh, another of our previous webinars, you can see our work in process discussion as well, where I go into great details on the intricacies of that uh, concept. And lastly, notice that we are crediting or reducing our vendor deposit account. So I'm now applying the funds that the vendor actually was holding for us, which reduces the amount we totally owe them, and then alleviates that vendor deposit um, asset. So we're basically, essentially we're reallocating that asset. That is the accounting behind how the vendor deposits really work. So now let's take a look at a very important report that's used to monitor our vendor deposits called the Open Vendor Deposit Report, which we access from our accounts payable reports. And you can see it listed about halfway down our accounts payable folder. If it's a report that uh, you should be monitoring, and I suggest that you do, you can always add it to your favorites so you can access it quickly. And quite honestly, the Open Vendor Deposit Report is one of our five monthly reports that we at Design Manager strongly recommend are reviewed each month. And again, we have another webinar called our five monthly reports to review, where I go into great detail of the importance of each of these reports, how transactions are recorded on them and ultimately removed from them, and how they affect your entire accounting model as a whole. Let's take a look at the one of those reports, our open vendor deposit report. I could print it for the current fiscal month. It's also able to be printed retroactively if I wanted to print it as of the end of last year, et cetera. I can certainly do so just by dropping the fiscal month uh, menu back. I can print it for a particular vendor, client, or project ranges, and I can sort it either by vendor or project. And there it is. And this is a listing of all of the vendor deposits that I've recorded that I have not yet applied on those final vendor invoices. They're listed for each vendor. We can see the totals for each vendor and the current vendor deposit balance. Now notice that 17, 15, 40 is a very important number. That's going to correspond to another important report called our balance sheet report. That's under our general ledger reports, financial statements, balance sheet. And this is really a indication of the overall fiscal well-being of your company. And in that sense, 
a very important report indeed. And on that balance sheet, under our assets column, as we were talking about vendor deposit being an asset, we can see our vendor deposit account listed, and the balance is indeed 175040, which matches the amount in the report precisely. Now, if those two values did not match, there would be an other transactions figure right above our vendor deposit balance indicating that there are transactions not necessarily uh, um, naturally shown on the vendor deposit report but are included in the balance sheet and those may be uh, something you want to review. Now why is reviewing this report important? Well this assists you in keeping a alert of the in-process orders particularly those that vendors have already received the funds from your company so it's really imperative to monitor the progress of those orders. You've already provided them with funds. When are they going to complete their side of the transaction, i.e., uh, finish the merchandise or services? As I said before, entries on this report are being maintained in that vendor deposit asset account. If the entry should no longer be on the report, let's say the vendor invoice was, uh, was not entered uh, by accident or the deposit should have been refunded or it should have been applied to a different invoice. We, those transactions need to be reflected in your design manager. Otherwise, you could be negatively affecting your financial statements, particularly if the bill was missed and you're, and you're understating your cost of goods sold, which would then be overstating your net income, which has a negative tax implications, as we all know. And again, how do entries drop off this report? Well, we saw how they do so. All we have to do is make a vendor invoice that utilizes the vendor deposit and it'll drop off the report. So let's make a, let's uh, put a vendor invoice in for our Hilson purchase order three for legacy antiques that we just created. Invoice on project purchase order, Hilson, there it is. Put some fictitious invoice number in, use today's date. There's our deposit being utilized in the lower left corner, reducing the total amount due of the vendor invoice itself. And now, if we post that vendor invoice, previously we had an entry for 1100 on the report for Legacy Antiques. If we reprint again, we can see that entry is gone and our current uh, vendor deposit balance has correspondingly decreased. Very simple. That's a classic report in monitoring uh, your vendor deposits. And again, extremely important as it does tie directly into your balance sheet, which ties directly into your uh, company's fiscal well-being. And with that, that brings us to our end of our discussions on vendor deposits today. And as I said time and again, Vendor deposits are an extremely important concept in the design industry as they allow us to provide the vendor with a good, uh, good faith funds to secure an order and yet they're held appropriately as an asset until they are actually applied to that end vendor invoice where they're converted into work in process and ultimately cost of goods sold. I tried to discuss a wide variety of concepts such as actually recording the vendor deposits and I tried to show some additional tools to quickly enter vendor deposits using our quick add vendor deposit window and the tools to monitor our vendor deposits uh, such as our transaction window, our vendor transaction detail window, our open vendor deposit report and I tried to also go into the accounting uh, behind the vendor deposits themselves just to provide a little greater insight into the whole process. And with that, I thank you for joining our discussion today and I hope you attend another of our free webinars in the near future. Take care and have a great day.